So now let's consider some basic integration rules. All right, just like we had differentiation rules and we had basic differentiation rules, we're going to have some basic integration rules. And what these do is they reverse the differentiation. So that's how we're going to reason that they make sense is talking about whether it differentiation of our result works to give us back what was in the integral. Okay, so if we wanted to integrate x to the n dx, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do x, we're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by that exponent. All right. Then we're going to add the constant c because we're always going to do this. So this one here is going to be our integration power rule. All right. Now see why this makes sense. Okay, this makes sense because if I have x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and I took the derivative of that, well, that would mean the n plus 1 would come down. I would still have uh, an n plus 1 in the denominator. Then I'd have x, and I'd take that n plus 1, and I'd subtract 1. So what is all that? This is doing the derivative. So what does that all end up with? That cancels, that cancels, that cancels, and I get x to the n. And that's why it's working. And then we always add our plus c on to get all the possible antiderivatives. So again, what we're going to say to ourselves is we add 1 to the exponent and divide by that exponent. Add 1 to the exponent divide by that exponent. All right, so this will work for any power of x, all except for 1. Now the key is right here, this won't work for n equals a negative 1, because we're going to end up with a 0 in the denominator. But what is x to the negative 1? Well, that's actually 1 over x. Now if we wanted to integrate 1 over x, we know a function who has that as its derivative, and that is ln of x. Now, to be most general here, we're actually going to say ln of absolute value of x, and then plus c. All right, you want to integrate e to the x? Well, what function gives you e to the x as a derivative? That's easy, that's e to the x plus c. All right, when would you get a to the x? Well, that would have to come from taking the derivative of a to the x, but when you take the derivative of a to the x, you get an ln a multiplied by it. So I would need a 1 over ln a as a correction factor now to take care of the ln a that's going to come out, and then I still need my plus c. Okay, how about integrating cosine x? Well, if I do the integral of cosine x, well, that cosine comes from sine of x plus c. All right, Sin, now integrate sine of x. Well, sine comes from cosine x, but the problem is cosine x's derivative is negative sine. So I need a negative to make up for the fact that I only, I want a positive end result on my sine, so I need the negative there to cancel the negative that would come out of the derivative from cosine. And again, add a plus c. All right. So interestingly enough now, I'm going to skip some of the other functions and go to something like the integral of x, uh, secant squared x dx. Now why? Why am I looking at that? Well, again, I'm asking if the stuff in the integral here, the integrand, if that looks like the derivative of something. And in fact, it does. I know that that's the derivative of tan x, and I need a plus c. This is interesting because you might have thought that I was going to go to the integral of tan x after doing sine and cosine. Ah, but here's where something comes up. This is actually much more difficult 
because I don't know a function whose derivative is tan x, whereas I know a function whose derivative is basically cosine x, sine x, and secant squared x. So it's not always so immediately obvious which are the easy integration problems and which are more difficult. That's why I think of integration as more of an art form where you have to recognize something. You have to see a certain pattern or something that you've seen before um, in order to accomplish the integral. So we'll keep repeating that idea. So this will be left for later. All right. So again, as long as I can recognize it as a derivative of something, I can do this. Secant tan x. Oh, well that came from secant x. And I need a plus c. When did I get cosecant squared? Well, that came from, well, secant squared gave me tan. Cosecant squared is here going to give me cotan x, but the problem is cotan x gave negative cosecant uh, squared, so I need a negative out in front, and then I still need my plus c. And cosecant x cotan x? Well, that's what I would get basically from cosecant x, but again, I need a negative to make up for the fact that um, I would have a negative in the derivative, and I need a plus c. All right, so then a couple of more uh, interesting examples here. What if you just integrated the constant 1? Well, when would you get 1 as a derivative? Well, that would be if you just had x. So that's why we're getting the integral of 1 is x, and then we need our plus c. All right, it could really be any constant, because if we integrate any constant, we would just get kx plus c because the derivative of this would just give me the k. A few more um, things that we'd like to know are some properties. So what if I have a constant multiplying some function inside an integral? Well, what I would like to know is, can I actually just bring the constant out? Yes, you can. You can take the constant out if it makes it easier for you to do. So the integral of k f of x dx is k times the integral of f x dx, where k is a con but k has to be a constant. What about adding and subtracting inside? Well, I'd like to know if, if I want to do the integral of f of x plus or minus g of x dx, could I do them individually and add the result? And this is true. Yes, you can. I could do the integral of f of x dx, then add or subtract the integral of g of x dx. Now, <laughs> one thing I should note here, which we're going to see, um, like with differentiation, remember you could do that with differentiation, but when we got to uh, products and quotients, it was much more difficult. Same is going to happen here. When I get the products and quotients, it's not going to be so easy. I can't simply just break them up. But for addition and subtraction, I can. 